game 10 of our 12 game tournament here at the Cayman Islands Classic. We are on day three of three final games being played here. We got three more for you today, including this one coming to you live from beautiful Georgetown Grand Cayman, John Gray Gymnasium. This game, we got Illinois State, Boise State, both looking to finish on a win in their last game of this tournament. Here's a look at how we got here. Boise State beating St. Bonaventure, Illinois State beating Akron. These two teams are facing off right now for fifth and sixth place. We already saw Akron and St. Bonaventure play in the early game. Akron winning that one to go home with wins. Still coming up today, we've got Georgia and Georgia State playing for third and fourth place. And we've got Clemson and Creighton in the championship game. That game is at 7.30 Eastern tonight. That'll be the final one. We hope that you will stay tuned for all of these games. Hey, everybody, I'm Kristen Balboni. I'm your sideline reporter for the entire Cayman Islands Classic. We're having a good time. Hope that you are joining us for maybe the second or the third time as your team's face off. Maybe you're just a fan of basketball. Maybe you're tuning in for some other reasons. Regardless, go ahead and send some comments in on Facebook. That's what makes these Facebook broadcasts so fun, makes them unlike any other sporting event event you've ever seen. So here's what you can do right off the bat, as we always like to do. We want you to chime in with who you're rooting for, where you're watching from. Always love to see where people are checking in from. So keep those comments coming. I'll be reading those throughout the broadcast. You can also post a picture on Instagram. So use the hashtag Cayman Classic. We've had a bunch of good ones come in throughout this entire tournament, and it's not done yet. Go to Instagram, post a picture of maybe how you're watching. Maybe you got some gear on. Maybe you've made it down to the Caymans like some of these fan bases. Use that hashtag Cayman Classic, and we will show your picture on this game. Now, speaking of this game, let's get the two guys here, two great basketball minds, Doug Gottlieb, Tim Scarborough, to uh, break down this matchup between Boise State and Illinois State, guys. I love the compliments early. Love the compliments early. He's Tim Scarborough. I'm Doug Gottlieb. We'll be calling today's action. Illinois State, Boise State, the Valley versus the Mountain West. And Tim, uh, I think we should start with the Valley. Let's start with the Redbirds. The strength of this team is on the inside. Yarborough is one. Malik Yarborough, a tremendous talent, but you really like another Redbird. You know, Phil Fame is the guy. I like, obviously, I love Malik Yarborough. Don't get me wrong, but Phil Fame is a guy I think you need to go to a little bit more. He's a back to the basket player, but he can face up as well. Slim, Slim Shady inside, and he can move. Very well, Doug, and, excuse me, when they give him the ball inside, good things happen. You saw those numbers, the productivity, the athleticism, and the dexterity around the bucket. Look at him. His thin frail frame works because he's so quick around the basket, and he can get it in and get it up quickly. When they throw it into him, good things happen because the outside happens as well. You missed. You could have gone the dexterity, flexibility, and productivity, right? You could have gone all, all, all three in one. All right, let's go over to the other side as Boise State. Big breaking news. You follow Boise State. R.J. Williams, the junior college transfer who's been spectacular for them so far in this tournament, is not going to play due to a shoulder injury, which was aggravated yesterday. So, no R.J. Williams. Who's going to pick up the slack? R.J. Williams hurt his left shoulder, which, as you know, he's a left-handed player. But Jessup is the guy who was a returning scorer from last year, 93-point shots hit. Yesterday, went on a bit of a shooting spree, 7-14 to 14 from the field, 9 rebounds and 5 assists as well. And he does a lot and don't have to do a lot today, but you see what he does best, catch and shoot. Splash after splash after splash, and then when you come out on him, a little drive and a kiss off the glass. Yeah, he, in fairness, he didn't go to a shooting spree. He went to making spree. That was that's the big thing. A making spree. Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah. So Anybody can you, shoot if, him. If you're, you've already gotten found this found us on Facebook, you know that we interact with you. Zach Copeland and Keyshawn Evans. I think big challenge for the Redbirds at the one and at the two. William yeah. Tinsley, another talented, talented player. Very good shot blocker as well at the three. For Boise State, Marcus Dickinson, not a great shooter, but a very good defender. Pushes the ball in transition. Pat Dembley is a fantastic shooter. Derek Alston, who looks, if you close one eye, looks looks like Brandon Ingram. We'll get to his story. And Zach Haney, really talented inside guy. So the Redbirds bring a very big and vibrant fan base. Dan Muller's crew may see Hine today as well. Guy's been injured for Illinois State. This should be a good game. These are two, I think, high-level, potentially postseason teams. No doubt. Getting ready to match up. This is an important game, too, because it's a chance to, to go home 2-1, and one, respectable, and you can say, hey, I was one game away from winning that whole thing. 
That's Malik Yarborough. Dad played at Illinois State. Does everything but shoots the ball well from, from three. Throw it up from high. Big fellas couldn't go get it. Uh, Yarborough will play everything except maybe drive the bus. He's just not driven the bus yet. That's because he's has a tremendous all-around skill set. Being guarded by Haney, who's the center, and that is a mismatch. You see Yarborough low by him. Yeah, downhill, man. They, he got the head of Steve. He can go left or right. Loves to go left there. Alston, who struggles with the strength of older players, only 185 pounds and six foot nine. This is Demby, Jessup, Jessup for three, right on cue. Bang! Buckets. That's the inside-out approach that you yep. and I talk about. Even though it was in the high post, it collapses the defense. But you have to respect it. It's that lifting of the weak side roll, man. That's Boise in a zone now for one possession of man to man. Tinsley, Tefain, Diarbo, Tefain for two. Possession. What a possession. That was a thing of beauty. Think of beauty because that ball went side, top side, to the middle, high, low. This Justinian Jessup is Haney rolls. So this is a pick, roll, and lift on the weak side. Yep. And there's Jessup in range and in rhythm. And to me, that was an over help, especially when you're guarding the shooter. The there's dive man was already being picked up, but the weak side help guy covered the basket, which he should. But you have to recognize if you got a guy there already, stay close. And I would stay attached as much as I could. To, to Jessup. Travel on the play. Here's Dan Muller. Of course, coaching at his alma mater to great success. Four years in a row, they've reached the finals of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, Arch Madness. Isn't it great when you see guys able to ascend in the coaching ranks and ultimately get back to their alma mater? Sure. That's great. Great story. Okay. Recruiting is about telling a story. Now, when you, when you recruit to your own alma mater, you're telling your story. Yep, you live Haney there. with his second bucket. Zach Haney got it going early for Boise State. This is a Boise State program. They won 20 games six consecutive years. Pat Demby gets the run through and the score. And Illinois State, another slow start for the Redbirds. And Dan Muller not happy at all. And you know Dan Muller is in there all day every day talking about getting off to a good start so he does not want to call this timeout but he wants to get his team's attention and right now they're sleepwalking a little bit as they give up an easy Fain one. just reverses the basketball without without looking I, 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 I read some lips there i'm not sure i read what i was supposed to read oh man uh, not safe for work. Right I, I think it was uh, somewhere in the shut the front door area. <laughs> yeah, was, that's was what said. I read there. Yeah. Only it wasn't a door. Yeah. And yeah, you, you like, got I'm it. I'm talking. You it, shut yes, the you, front yeah, door. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, a, um, is that Aisha or is that Aisha? Aisha Crawford, Mariel, uh, watching from Tulsa. Uh, Be Char real. There's Leon Rice. A tremendous job. You know, he's won 20 games all but one year. It was eight years now in his ninth season at Boise. Before he got there, they only won 20 games seven times in the history of the program. Needless to say, Leon Rice doing an outstanding job up in Boise. There's Yarborough, catches, misses in the middle. There's a weakness to Malik Yarborough's game. It is the jump shot. Outside of that, he's an outstanding player. Demby. Tax, finds Alston, back to Demby. Demby a lights out, catch and shoot shooter. Haney's been dominant so far, oh. but turns the basketball Terrible. over. Terrible pass. Copeland. Copeland, Jefferson, who got really hot in their first game. Jefferson misses the pull-up. Got away with a little shuffle there, too. Another that same pass. roll and replace as Demby turns it over. Sheesh. Mike Yarbrough to the bucket. And he scores. Well, Pat Dembley is a guy who, tremendous shooter, playing the point guard position, has 
They've chosen to go away from Marcus Dickinson, who's not much of a shooter, but is more of a true point guard. Do you like that, though? This Alston was, comes in and gets the dunk. Depends on that was a very nice flash to the bucket right there by Slim Shady. The second. We got we call Phil Haney Slim Shady, but Alston is a real one. Take a look. You, you mentioned how thin he was. He's 145 in pounds that, when he showed up that's on just campus. An amazing story. Beautiful pass from Justinian Jessup. Jessup, of course, struggled with injury. That's why he didn't play much before they got to the island. Alston's dad, an NBA player. They feel like he's their best next NBA prospect. Of course, Chandler Hutchinson was a first-round draft pick, a lightly recruited player out of Santa Margarita in Orange County. Yeah, we, really good player development program at Boise State as Yarbrough gets the ball inside and gets called for a charge. Look at the energy from Boise State's bench. And Leon Rice, you know, we asked him about Chad Hutchinson, when did you know that he, you know, that you had an NBA player on your hands? He right. said, it wasn't right away. You know, it was kind of a development thing. Each year he got good. By midway, about his junior year, he realized, man, this kid is actually pretty special. 33 in the way. That's David Wacker who just checked into the game. You have to be a guy who fouls a lot if you last that Wacker, don't you? Hey, that is just Wacker. That's a, one of those big guys that sets big time screens. He's screening there for Dembley. Dembley kicks it out to Alston, knocks it down. Yeah, I love this team. Boy, the Broncos look great, and they are playing without their leading scorer, R.J. Williams. Here comes the two threes once again. Copeland steps into one. Nice. And the Redbirds are on the uh, on the board. And the three Red points actually look better when the Broncos have gone zone. That other really good possession where they went top side, top side, got into the high post, low post for a dunk. Wacker with the big rebound, kicks it out. Jessup, another three. No. Yarborough. A little short there. They better get a hand down. Huh? I thought they didn't get there in time. You're going to discourage that shot if you're the Redbirds. Nice dive. Jim Bolton. They do well. Adobo, excuse me. Well, so far... We've finally gotten some offense. Didn't have much in our last game. Pat Dembley kicks it out, and Alston knocks it in. Not to be outdone, Zach Copeland says, I see your three, and I match it from NBA range. That's an excellent observation, man. These guys have some range. And remember that there's two lines on the floor. The inner line is actually the college line. The outer line is the international line. The NBA line is only slightly behind it. And the international line in the corner is equal to the NBA line in the corner. Let's see if that makes makes sense to you. The only NBA in, line is in the corner. Yeah, yep. only in the corners. Yep. Let's go down, let's go over to Kristen. Said, well, if everyone wants to hurt their ears, that's fine. Marcus Dickinson checking into the game. Thanks so much, Kristen. Remember, continue to hit us up, interact with us on Facebook, and uh, we'll try and get to him in game. If not, Kristen is keeping track of all of them. Here is Alston, drives to the hole and scores. Derek Alston from Houston, Texas, the redshirt sophomore. Second generation Hooper right there. Looking good, too. He just seems longer than six foot eight, doesn't he? I mean, I'm always shocked when I look down and they say he's 6'8". He looks about 6'9", 6'10", maybe. And that's Josh Jefferson, the sharpshooter, combo guard for the Redbirds. As Illinois State has started to get a little bit of rhythm offensively, they're struggling to get stops defensively. There's Dickinson for Alston. Wacker posting inside, now with the basketball. And Jessup is going oh, left off. no matter what. And Copeland lets him get to his left, and he makes him pay. That's strong, though. I mean, absorbing the contact, the rip through so the help side doesn't knock it away. Did a strong finish. Justinian Jessup from Longmont, Colorado, drives in, takes the contact, and finishes. See how he took that ball away so the swipe wouldn't yep. happen, and then you bring it back out when you're ready to let it fly. It's a great job. 
That's, and, and that's why you like older play, Doug, right there. They just understand all the little nuances. First of all, they're physically stronger, too, than they were their freshman year. Yep. And then they, they're smarter, and, and then the decision-making, all of that comes into play. That's why Clemson is where they are, honestly. Just to, as we talked about earlier in the week, four uh, fifth-year seniors, and when you have that, that is a load of experience, especially in the Power Five conference. It's a big lineup for Illinois State with Tinsley, that starting lineup. Tinsley, Fain, and Yarborough. As Wacker called for the foul. Throw it into Tinsley. This is Yarborough. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Give Fain a touch. Faces up and he delivers. Feels like he can do what he wants with Wacker. And I, here's what I, I liked about him. Wacker, obviously, big, strong body, wide base, red shirt senior. You don't want to simply bang with him in the low post. Face him up and use your athleticism. Yeah, why not? Jessup trying to get to that strong left hand. That ball really, really moving. As Wacker's going to get called for another yep. foul. Pat Adams, that official underneath. Adams has officiated Final Four games. And I really didn't see what Wacker did there. He he posted and he reposted. He tried to seal the guy. To me, it was, this is basketball. He didn't use his hands. He, Maybe a little hip check, but hey, that's what that's what you do when you're trying to post up. All right, we'll see Alston now with some three-quarter court pressure. You mentioned his length. This looks like a pogo stick. Uh, they go it for does look like a pogo. Oh, speaking but of so pogos. Too, so too does Fain. The, the, the issue they're going to run into with Wacker getting in early foul trouble is outside of, you know, outside of, they're two centers. They just have no no real power forward. And you get the size of Illinois State. But Fane, as we talked about at the top, you give him the ball, it's like UPS. He delivers. Well, Fane just got called for a foul. Well, let's take a look at Fane at the other end. The other end, you know, it starts with the drill penetration, of course. He gets behind the rim. The guy guarding him, Haney, has to step up and stop the ball. He sneaks behind, and that's as easy a two as you're going to get for Phil Fain. Zach Haney got him into foul, gets a foul on on Fain. Fain tried to tried to bow up, had a forearm in the back of Haney, who backed into him. And they're going to tight in there. Yes, they are. And that one's going to be on Tinsley. It gets called for chucking his offensive player. That's the forearm yeah. to the chest where you used to yeah. be able to stop a guy's movement across the lane. Now yep. you cannot. Freedom of movement. That's been the, the mantra for four or five years now. And they've points of emphasis each year. They've developed more and more. Jefferson went for the steal, and his man, Justinian Jessup, only almost made the three because of it. Yarborough secures the rebound. Yeah, it was a bad gamble. Almost cost him three. Jefferson gets his own three. Nice box out. Haney secures the rebound. For Dickinson, Norman North High School. Played high school basketball with Trey Young. I mean, that's why he doesn't shoot very much. He didn't shoot much <laughs> in high school. <laughs> Zach Haney gets the ball. Trey Young. Also, Lindy Waters on that team. Stars at Oklahoma State. That's a pretty good basketball team. Trey is around my neck of the woods playing for the Hawks. The Baby Hawks, I like to call them. They're young. So Evans drives in and gets the bucket. And Keyshawn Evans providing a spark. As he fills in for Zach Copeland. Like Harwell driving. In the game off the bench for Boise State. Rotation is a little different because of injury. Dickinson, not known as a shooter, steps into one for the Broncos. He looked good shooting that one, though, didn't he? Confidently catch and shoot. But it was all within the continuity of the offense. Those are the best threes, man. You, you talked about this a little bit yesterday where guys are already being guarded. They take a jab step and pull up and shoot. That is a really difficult shot to make. That was a difficult shot to make oh. over Haney, but Malik Yarborough. And you know, there's two ways to get a guy's attention. You know, the last game, Akron, you told me he came off the bench, and he certainly got his coach's attention and responded. Malik Yarborough got taken to the woodshed in the media a week and a half, two weeks ago now, by his coach. 
And Muller, you know, he said he has a good relationship with the kid, so he knew he could do it. And he knew he would respond. And Jefferson deflects the ball off of Malik Harwell. So Illinois State will get the ball after the break. Let's go over to Kristen. Talented scoring lead guard. Leon, of course, a longtime assistant and close dear friend of Mark View, head coach of Gonzaga. If you got a chance to go to Boise. It is a beautiful city with a quaint little downtown. And of course, they love the outdoors there. If you like to hunt, if you just want to go float the river, fish, hike, you name it, you can do it. Chris Peterson, a longtime coach at Boise State, of course, took the Washington job and smartly kept his home in Boise. A real estate boom. As Illinois State what? continues to attack the interior. He made that over three plays, yeah. too. That was Malik Yarbrough. He just finds a way to score points. Yep. Keyshawn Evans kicked it to him. As Keyshawn Evans drives in. All the times you need your big guys, your big guns, if you will, to come through for you in games like this. And so far, Haney and Yarbrough getting it done. So is Fane, your guy Fane in the Fain. open. He's yeah, still doing well. Yep. Yeah. Fane is three for three. Yarbrough's three for five. They left him. Deshaun Evans misses that jump shot, made one earlier. This is Austin. That's a pretty solid ball handle, too, bringing that ball up. Woo! Austin's length, amazing. Justinian Jessup tries to get the rebound, can't secure it. And Illinois State transitions to offense. Nice move there, just didn't convert. Evans misses another one Evans in and out, and here's Alston. He tried to rip it. loses the basketball, and he's going to get called for a foul. Evans did the old stick your foot out and try to catch some contact and get a foul. But the officials were going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Think about it. We ain't falling for the banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> Dowu gets some high fives. You see Hain battling back from injury. Dowu gave them some good minutes. Uh, Dave Brebson works for the Big Ten Network and I. Yeah, we, I we did a bracket buster game between Vermont, Taylor Coppenrath, Tom Brennan was the coach, and Nevada. In fact, the last time Nevada was really good. We did that at 11 in the morning local. We okay. drove over the Donner Pass, and uh, that night at 7 at night, we did a game Hawaii, back when Hawaii was good, against Pacific. Oh, wow. In Stockton, California. Oh, the two, two different locations. It's a full day. It's a full day. That's a good day. Yes. The alley-oop to Tinsley is a little bit off, and he misses it. There's Harwell, who's fouled, and one! Malik Harwell. That was a little, that was a little Marv Alberts itch right there. I like, I like your Marv yes. Alberts impersonation. Yes, Malik Harwell. Yes, you, you uh, could be Malik Harwell. the 10th Alberts that's in Albert the business. <laughs> he drives in, that's a hard shot, but he spins it up a little English and in. Do you do any other impressions, Doug? I do. I do. Pocatello, Idaho, redshirt junior, Century High School. Tore his uh, ACL during his freshman year. Kid has a chance to really contribute this year. The Broncos off the bench, especially with Hobbs so far sitting with injury. Yeah, Alex Hobbs is out. RJ Williams is out. Big Ben takes a step back three and nails it. Illinois State continues to hang around. Here's Harwell. Denver. 
And Haney has his way with the interior defense. Yeah. His third touch low, his third basket. Fame's just not, we talked about him being slim. He's not strong enough to guard him in, in the paint like that. Um, sure. Kinsley with his second straight three, a contested fadeaway three. Not sure if that's the one you want, but. Alex Hobbs is in the game. So he was just push. 34. Well, he said he was going to try and give it a go, and how about that block? Two hands. I don't think that foul is going to be on Fame. Yeah. He blocked it with two hands. I think it's going to be on the ground. We'll get an update in a second. Take a look. Yeah, I think it's going to be on the ground. That is a clean block. He blocked it with two hands. And the verticality, too, right? He went straight he up. He can't get any better yep. block than that. As Keyshawn Evans, I would say, is called for the foul. As and before the shot. Dan yep. Muller tries to get an explanation for Pat Adams. Chris Muller's Dumont. still rocking the pleats, I might add. I might have to text <laughs> Muller. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down to Kristen. I guess I did it game one. You just, you weren't here, here for it. I, I have to yeah, ask I don't the question. Think it was this, is in the, yeah. this is in a total non-creepy way, but I have to ask. Did you sit on Santa's lap when you interviewed him? <laughs> I, I, I sure did not, Doug. Not I mean, well, I mean you, when you, you're supposed to sit on Santa's lap She's when you adult. ask. When, I think there is an age restriction yeah. on that, right? She's an is adult. Five and under. Is there? What's the age uh, restriction? For me, there is. What's the age restriction? For me, there is. What's the age restriction? Um, I'm going to say 10? not me. 10 or 11? The age restriction? Yeah, I'd 12. say that's, that's What's the age the top, restriction top for limit. for uh, for Halloween for going trick or treating? Trick or treating, that's that's probably the same. I would think. Oh, I think 11. if you're in middle school, if you're in middle school, I have a tough time giving you candy. I'm going to be honest. And, and I go by size. The great, too. you remember the Curb Your Enthusiasm? I'm not sure if you've seen the Curb Your Enthusiasm uh, when when Larry would not give some high school girls some yeah, candy. Yeah, I did see that. That's yes, Harwell. Nice shot. You mentioned Hobbs, who's been hobbled. Out there on the floor now. Yeah, he's giving it Number a go. 34 is going to give it a go. R.J. Williams oh. not going to give it a go. He's R.J. Williams in the headband at the end of the bench there. He's dressed. Boise though. State. He's dressed. He is dressed. And, and that's and, more and, of a, and he brought and he wore the headband. He wore the headband. That's more of a fake me out though, right? You no, I mean like, look, if you're going to get dressed, you get fully dressed. No, not the headband, but just getting dressed, knowing you're not going to play. I guess never know in case of emergency. I don't know. He hurt his left shoulder. Which is a shooting shoulder. Yes. Well, guys, Coach Rice said he wanted to play. He said they they just made the decision, the coaching staff made the decision to, to hold him out. So they could always change their so mind. Maybe he put on the headband like, Coach, put me in. Yeah. You know, he's a baller, man. He wants to play. Doug, you talked about that off camera, I, man. Just, I just, I, I just want to play, right? I don't remember guys missing, so many guys missing games. Now, look. Ankle injuries, knee injuries, nothing you can do. Justinian Jessup to the hole. A beautiful set from the Broncos out of the inbounds. As Justinian Jessup, the guy that you had us wanted to watch before the game. Yep. Eight points so far, three of five from the field. You don't get any easier than that. Leading the team, leading all scores with eight. And now Yarborough slides into more of a power forward spot. They open up the court. Ugh. Another turnover. For Boise State, here's Hobbs. We mentioned his injury. Harwell, the redshirt junior, Dembley. Great Boise job. State with a really small lineup here. Great job on that ball screen right there. Wacker with a couple early fouls back in at center. And there's Hobbs. Now here, here's Boise State. Tim, what would you like about their ability to get a bucket here for Jessup? Well, they see him, they run him off with kind of a, a, a zipper cut, but they keep the action going, and, and he has hit a shot from there from three. So the closeout wasn't what it should be. You got to close out on balance, and he saw that little seam, and he went right to the bucket. A great job. One dribble, two steps, and he's at the rim. So. The, dif the difference in basketball from at least when I played and graduated in 2000 to now is – more of the pick and rolls were like that action where it's a side pick and roll and everybody else is away. Whereas now, you you can keep a shooter on the strong side and you just lift him on the back side. Very true. Create different spacing and different angles than basketball used to have. And that really is the European influence. 
Here's the watch. A roll and then the backside replace. Hobbs should lift up higher. He should start down lower and lift up higher in the corner. There's Harwell. Finds, finds Wacker. Wacker over to Hobbs. Hobbs off the ball screen again. There's the backside lift of Dembley. Dembley drives in. Might have been fouled. Turns the ball over. Hard to try. And, I'm not sure he knew that Harwell would be cutting. Oh, he's probably throwing, throwing a skip. You're right. Probably a foul on Hobbs. A pretty good defense with his lower body as Copeland jumps up and knocks it down. Copeland's shooting pretty solid. Two Anthony two. Hollis said Jessup has made more layups in this game than his entire career. <laughs> well, he's certainly known as a, a standstill three-point shooter. But James says Tristan did not sit on Santa's lap. Just consider that a... A missed opportunity, Kristen. If you don't get what you want Christmas time, you got to blame yourself. you got to take accountability. As Harwell was not fouled by Payne, yes. Doug, would you sit on Santa's lap if you were down here doing the interview? Yeah, but it's not creepy if I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm going to admit there's a creep you... factor, but I also think it's a great visual, right? Brings you back to childhood <laughs> days. Hilarious. If you did it, yes. it, it, not me. Well, Boney's got enough fans out there that she could just put her Christmas list out on Facebook and she would get everything she would. This no. is This is true. Balby is big. Big, big, big in the social networking community. Social media. Big. Copeland, that one a lot easier than his last pull-up jump shot. I think surprised at how wide open he was. Going to his left as opposed to his right. Dembley back to point. So if this game gets tight down yes. the stretch, yes. Do you throw in R.J. Williams to close the deal? Or do you I mean, just... Do you can just... he lift his arm to shoot? He can't shoot free throws and you foul him. I don't know if Illinois State knows that he has a bad shoulder. Yarborough steps it's... into one from 15. It's nice. He is playing very well here in the first half. He's playing within himself, I think, is probably the... Yeah, within the context of the, the, the uh, offense as well. Uh, Justin says it's probably creepier if Doug sits on Santa's lap. <laughs> oh, no, that's a good TV, I think. If you do. Alston throws the ball outside. You know, one of the things Alston did there, he caught the ball, kept it high, but he threw it down to a shooter, like a downward angle. That is hard to catch. And here's Yarbrough okay. again with a bucket, this yeah. time over Dickinson. And he stepped over the line, so it was just a two. And he gets his team to within one, which is important to some people out there. Laser-like focus from Malik Yarborough. Two three zone now. And he can't cover the pick and roll stuff. Slide into his zone. Yep. You see Malik Yarborough fired up, yeah, he is fired getting up. pumped up, and here's why. In transition, first one in range and in rhythm to his left hand. Hand down, man down, splash from 17. Too much space. And if you didn't think he could make it, now Marcus Dickinson have some. Let's go, he says. And the Redbirds within one. So you better ask somebody. Ten points right there, five for seven. That's efficient. Three rebounds, two assists. So, Solid four so game. Who'd you play for at Liberty? Who that play for? Yeah, coach. Oh, Jeff Meyer. He's an uh, assistant at Butler now. He was an assistant yeah, for John coach. Yeah. yeah, excellent yeah. coach. Yeah. W would he, when you sit down, uh, timeout, you're on offense. Would he put in two plays, zone and man, or only, only what you wanted to do? Yeah, he, he would. He would. But, but what we did, we ran a lot of our man stuff against zone. Yeah. So he just run. He he just called the set, and then he'd leave it to me as the as the point. I played point just like you. But I was a, more of a shooting guard. I was a combo. But he would say, Scar, make sure you read what they're in first. You know? Just because you're going to do you slightly it different matter. things. You, you said it didn't matter. No, you were shooting no matter what. You were shooting no matter what. That's what, you, <laughs> that's what you told me. I wish. Listen, I played with a guy named Bailey Alston. People won't know that name unless they go into the record books. But that guy scored 2,100 points in three years. So that tells you how many times I really got to shoot. Not very often. Bailey Alston. Alston. A L S T O N. What's, what's ba Bailey Alston doing? Bailey is a car salesman in North Carolina. He was from Henderson, North Carolina. He played at Rutgers, transferred into Liberty, and that was like, oh. He scored 2,100 points and in he didn't three play seasons. In three seasons? Just three seasons because he transferred in. Yeah, that's, he was a bucket getter. Yeah. 
plain and simple, shot 52% from the field for his career. And Doug, he couldn't even shoot a three. He was a terrible perimeter shooter. So that tells you how good he was off the dribble. Yep. Tremendous player. Happy and birthday to the master of the mid-range, Miles Simon, dear friend of mine, an assistant with the L.A. Lakers. Another guy, not a great three-point shooter, but no. an incredible mid-range game. But Above Miles the played right when the, the it, right before the proliferation of three-point. It was there. I they, remember they, they, beat, they beat Kentucky in the in the national championship game, who shot shot a ton of threes. But yes, I mean, yeah. nothing like what we see. Not everyone now. was doing that, right? No, no it really um, started to actually. First one to do it was Rick Pitino with Providence, you know, in the late '80s. Yeah, that's true. And it was uh, revolutionary when he did. goes baseline and abuses Alston. When Rick Pitino was doing that at Providence, though, it was really kind of looked at as an anomaly more sure. than anything. And he went to the Knicks and did the same thing. And people yep. said, you can't you can't do that in the NBA. Sure enough, Eric Alston struggling to guard Malik Yarbrough, who has eaten so far. He's got 12 already in this game. Haney finds Jessup. Jessup misses off the window. Yarbrough gets the rebound. Ahead to Copeland. Back, back to Yarbrough, who is fouled. That's what you do right there. Give it back to the guy. Hit ahead, cut, get it back. We'll take a look at the prior possession. Too quick to guard with the center and just too oh strong and big. Oh, my goodness. That was James Worthy-esque right there. Complete with the right arm sticking out. Might have, yeah. done, the, might have done the Heisman pose as well. Yeah, exactly. Desmond Howard action. Nick Yarbrough, who... The go-to guy for Illinois State. We mentioned his dad played for the Redbirds. Transferred in to play for Dan Muller. Yeah, he was pretty decent at St. Louis, playing for Jim Cruz yep. a few years ago. Coaching change made. He transferred. Yep. Yarbrough's going to get a break. I don't know if you want to cool off the hot hand. Yeah, right. I mean, he hits two jump shots. He gets the turnaround. My guess would be next foul, you get back in the game. Get a squig. A little squig on the bench. A nice little run. A little They're squig going, of water. Going to a matchup zone. Ah, oh, it's a little two-three zone it's here. Two-three. And, and they, um, it's been effective. They haven't really. As Haney misses the turnaround. Illinois State is on a 10-0 run. Dowu with a deep, decent job defensively. Big body. Sean Evans finds Jefferson. Jefferson drives in. Might have been fouled, but Dowu gets the putback. Dowu with a little loose change. Clean up. And, and again, we talk about it all the time, dribble penetration. If you, you, can't, you can't get out the shooters quick enough because everybody's got to help. And you certainly can't weak side rebound. You leave yourself exposed when you have guys who can get into that paint. Oh, well. That's Dembley. Dembley's a very good shooter, but that's not a great shot. And Haney, wow, what a rebound. Uh, Dobu battling. Uh, that's going to be a jump ball. And if you look on, on our score bug here on Stadium, that blue arrow means the jump ball goes to Illinois State. I like that. I was impressed by Haney, though, to, to try and secure that rebound with just his left hand. Yep. Gets the strength of a doe and smartly, Dan Muller puts Malik Yarbrough back in the game for the last buck 20. Doe is a big guy in his own right. Yarbrough only one foul, but trying to protect those fouls. He steps in and posts up against Haney. Catches it now. Beats a doe back. And Yarbrough to turns it over. Yeah. Trying to be a little too yeah. cute, but the, the, yeah. so much deeper. There was no one for him to pass in the weak side corner. That was probably Keyshawn Evans' fault. Yeah, he would have been off shooting that. Haney. Picks it out. Dembley drives in. And nice he finishes move. with his left hand. What a move. Man, that was. Pat Dembley. Because there was a wall of defense. And he went around it. Four points now for Pat. Illinois State not going to go, not going to play two for one. Instead, set up a zone offense play. Two for ones aren't as popular at this level as it is in, in the NBA. They all do it in the NBA. And Yarbo just too quick for him. Too quick in that low post. Be guarded by one guy, especially Zach Haney. You know, the, the transfer thing, I, I think that 
Yarborough didn't, it's a parallel transfer, maybe transferring down slightly a level yeah. from the A-10. Top of the A-10, very competitive. Bottom yeah. of the A-10, not as much. And the Valley had been down for a couple years up until obviously last year, Loyola Chicago went on a run. Valley's changed dramatically with you know, Valparaiso really moving up a level from low major to mid major. Yeah. Loyola Chicago struggled their first couple years in the Valley. I think the Valley pretty strong. We mentioned Northern Iowa, their young, talented freshman point guard. We saw what Loyola did last year in the tournament. Yarborough misses, gets it back, then misses. Adelwu misses a dunk. Yarborough can't secure wow. the basketball. Point blank. Illinois State missing an opportunity to go up six here in the waning seconds of the first half. And Dembley go. steps into one, and that's what happens. We mentioned Pat Dembley. Dembley. White, the shooter, finally steps into one. And Boise, despite being outplayed here late in the first half, is going to go into the break. Up a point. Dan Muller not happy about that finish. Missed opportunity after opportunity for the Redbirds. Well, that young man, Pat Dimley, with five points, he stopped the bleeding, keeping it close for them in the half. Right, let's go over to Christian, who's with Coach. Coach, 12-0 and run at one point to take the lead. What worked for your guys down that stretch? Well, we can't guard them. We finally got some stops. Obviously, our offense is working well. Malik's playing really well, but our defense has been terrible. What are you going to tell the guys at the half? Play a lot harder on defense. All right, thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. All right, stay tuned. Keep those comments. The guy that really kind of got it going, as you look at those two guys, Malik Yarbrough was just terrific in the first half. Very efficient, scoring a variety of ways. Coming up, when he's up and going up and down, you know, going downhill, so to speak, he's really difficult to stop because he's got an array of moves, four rebounds, two assists, and then Pat Dimbley got hot. Five of his seven points were in the last minute of the first half, so hopefully he can continue where he left off. Got to get Jess up a few more shots. And again, playing without R.J. Williams. But the Broncos, to me, have plenty of offensive firepower to get it done. But will they is the question. Well, Pat Dembley was a junior college All-American last year at Iowa Western Community College. Uh, Iowa Western last year was 27-5. and five. He's originally from the Twin Cities, played at Minneapolis North. He won a state championship as a senior. A very good shooting guard. And this is part of Boise State. It's still learning about their players and how they play in big situations. They were an ISO for Jessup to start the second half. And Justinian Jessup with the fadeaway. A Kobe Bryant style fadeaway from Justinian Jessup. With, with the left hand. And Kobe could do that with the left too. But yeah, that was uh, the baseline follow-up. Jessup, you know, he's, again, talking about the three-point shooting, but he's getting to the rim and shooting, scoring other ways this game. Yarbrough says, I see your fadeaway, and I match your fadeaway. Seven for 10 now, 17 points. I believe Yarbrough, this might be a 30-point night if he keeps it up. More than capable. Dembley doubled off that was of the a ball good track screen right there. to Jessup to Alston. Alston made one the first half, not so much in the second half, and the Redburns control. This is about as even a matchup as we've seen this week in the Cayman Islands. Yeah, what's interesting is I thought R.J. Williams and Yarbrough, that would have been, you know, they're, they're basically spinning images of each other. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been interesting to see. As Keyshawn Evans steps into one, missed a couple of open looks in the first half. Knocks that one down for his first three of the afternoon. Jessup, anything you can do, I can do better. No, you can't. He no, misses. You can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. <laughs> Yarbrough, good ball handler for his size. Finds Tinsley. Tinsley misses the pull-up jump shot. Did have a three in the first half. This is Alston. Red, red shirt sophomore. Post touch. Good. Play out of it. And he's got three back to the basket buckets, and he is fouled on the play by Fain. That's going to be his second personal foul. Intensely came over to help Doug, but he was on the, he was behind Fain. I mean, he was, that was I'm not in sure no they, man's land. Well, I don't know if they were doubling from the baseline side and Fain couldn't keep him away from his shoulder to be, to be fair. But yes, that was so, so Fain needed to push him towards Tinsley. Yes. I'm saying. Yeah, maybe. And, and Haney insisted with his big body, much bigger than, than Fain, able to turn over his left shoulder and get back to the middle, away from the double team. 
Haney. Around, around, and misses. The redshirt senior from Houston, Texas. It's a massive, massive body. Listen to 235, every bit of it. Back to a three-point game. The Redbirds continue to lead. Evans just hit a three. Finds Payne. Might have traveled. Doesn't get called for it. Open in the corner. And the second three of the day from Tinsley. Missed that pull-up. Do you really like Tinsley's versatility? There's great awareness by Fain, too, to find him. You know, because Fain would have taken a tough one, but found an open one in Tinsley. Yeah, nice spot-up jumper for him. And he, and he finds Jessup. Jessup Dickinson is not a great shooter, but did hit one the first half. Definitely oh, nice drives hands. in. That's going to go off of his leg. And it's going to go back to Illinois State. Well, we mentioned Illinois State. Much pain. Probably gets away. He might have traveled before he yeah. actually caught the when ball. He, when he dipped to the bucket and caught it. But in all fairness, they do have to let him come down. So it's kind of a good no call. Because they crowded him. He's, gotta, he's, got, he's, he's allowed to land when he rolls to the basket. Sure who, who, I'm not sure who that pass was to, though. Keyshawn Evans just kind of threw it yeah. up for grabs. And there's Thick Ben misses that open three. Doesn't matter. Dickinson, the jet comes out, pushes in transition, and he's fouled Most by Keyshawn Evans. Good, well coached teams yes. are so good at transition defense. You see how those guards rotated back? Now, that was a tough one because you have a good player coming at you who's going to throw a variety of moves. But there's very few true leak out runouts off of rebounds. Guys go back and they get their assignment, and the other three guys sprint back and try to get matched up. Well, pl plus a corner jump shot, and you're gonna, your defensive balance is going to be screwed up a little bit anyway, right? Yep, exactly right. This is Marcus Dickinson. Again, part of that junior class. Tremendous job for the Broncos, just being solid. It is the Defensive Player of the Year in the state of Oklahoma as a senior. Who knew they had a Defensive Player of the Year? <laughs> Norman, I saw Oklahoma, Oklahoma, huh? Yeah, Norman North. Mm -hmm. Huge high school in Norman. A couple thousand students. I got some big ones in Tulsa as well. Full, full disclosure, Doug, I've yes. never been to Oklahoma. Really? Never been there. It's flat. Been to Kansas. You haven't been to Kansas yet. Yeah, We're been, in Kansas well, City. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go across the border before right. I fly out of here. Because I'm up to 38 states if I get to Florida. I mean, if okay. I get to uh, Kansas. You haven't been to Idaho to see Boise State happen. Nope. I've got to make that happen. Idaho is beautiful. Going to Wyoming, Laramie. I may get to go to Idaho, too. We don't know. Fuck it. From Dem Pat Dembley. I bet you're doing that January 2nd. I don't know yet. Right. I, I need to sort that out. I'm still right. working Pat, on it. Pat yeah, Dembley. Dembley, junior college transfer, one dribble, the Juco All-American, smooth shooting guard. You mentioned about old coach Jeff Meyer. If you were jacking around in practice, he'd always say, this isn't Juco land, this is Division One basketball, son. Evans, the miss, Bain, the long arm, secures the rebound, gets Jefferson on another look, who knocks it down. Second chance opportunities, detrimental to a defense, especially when you have guys who can splash it, like Jefferson. And Josh Jefferson, second three on the day. Nice step back. Jessup loves that corner, misses it. Chastain secures the rebound. Chastain came in, Matt Chastain came in, give him some good minutes. Actually, he had an and one the other day. There's yeah, he did. Josh Jefferson, oh, a on. heat check, and I don't know if he's come hot. On. He must be on fire, because wow. that's what happens in NBA Jam when you get on fire. <laughs> I get that. Marv Albert is coming out of here. And, and that bank shot from there is nowhere in the world he meant to do that. But he certainly will take it. It still counts. Dembley back at him. Rims out. Copeland secures the rebound. Yarbrough and Adowu set to check back in. All of a sudden, this is a 10-point lead again. Spain slips, trying to spin. Get out of the lane. Good. <laughs> they didn't like all that dancing. Doesn't get dancing. called for travel the first time. <laughs> right. Does get travel called for travel the second time. Just, okay, bro, you you, you take it a little bit. A little Here's bit Spain, too much dancing out here. rebound. He finds Josh Jefferson. 
finds the bottom of the net. Then, next possession, just a throwback. Jefferson. And off the glass. Come on, Jefferson. You didn't mean to do it, but smile for the camera. You Banks know. are, in fact, open today. Thank you, Greg uh, Gurgler. We messaged just on Facebook. What else are we seeing on Facebook? On this, do you have an opinion? Because Dan Muller had a very strong opinion about Jack Stack. I'd love to know what everybody on Facebook thinks, too. Do right, you mind if I start? No, go ahead. Because I, I appear to be more traveled. You've only been to 33 states. You haven't even been to Kansas. 38, man. 38, don't, 38, don't, 38 don't cheat states. Me, Dougie. Um, Kansas City Joe's is also used to be Oklahoma Joe's. Right. It's fantastic. Oh. Jack Stack, also good. Uh, Memphis Rendezvous, uh, which is dry rub barbecue. Great. So Carolina. are we talking sweeter, the sweeter barbecue or the vinegar-based barbecue? Vinegar-based is more Vin Carolina. Vinegar is North Carolina. Yeah, North okay. Carolina. So we're talking sweet here. Here? Yeah. No, St. Louis is more sweet barbecue sauce. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm on that. I love St. Louis barbecue at a place called Famous Dave's where I get mine. Okay. Um, my Pauling. answer is yes. My answer is yes. Oh, man. So you can't Jack Stack? No, just oh, yes. 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 I mean, like. <laughs> oh, yes to all of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. I, I'm not a big St. Louis um, beef back rib sort of, you know, bunch of sauce guy. But I, I love Kansas City barbecue. I like Rendezvous barbecue. And I like the vinegar based barbecue. I like Memphis, Carolina. Yeah, yeah. My answer is yes. Sorry. I'd love to. I'm an opinionated <laughs> guy. And my opinion is. If you don't dig on swine, there's something wrong with you, not the swine. And, and I can attest to that because, <laughs> Kristen. And I'm going I, against my religious I, principles to, I, to say that. I've been with Doug <laughs> all week. And he's a pretty enthusiastic guy about a lot of stuff. But apparently barbecue gets the life out of this guy. Doug Gottlieb loves barbecue. Up? He is fired up about lunch after this game. He cannot wait. And Malik Yarbrough takes that. Takes that back on how it Part is. of it is I haven't eaten all day except for some coffee. <laughs> okay, that's Kozlov, why. <laughs> Kozlov just showed up here. He didn't. You know, there was no text. Hey, would you like some coffee? I would have texted. You know, if I was coming to Hey, would you like some coffee? <laughs> no, it's like, what do I have to do with can, this? Can I can I ask you a question since you're down there? As Austin yeah. makes the jump shot and the Broncos smack the floor to dig in defensively as the lead is now eight. Malik Yarborough yo-yoing the ball. What is the, there's got to be something. I know you've been in the gym most of the trip, but it's, what's the, you have to have before you leave the Caymans thing? Is it fish? Is there a coffee? Got to be coffee down there, right? Doug, you're asking the wrong person. I've been in this gym for about 12 to 14 hours a day. What's the consensus stand? I've heard the coconut grouper is something I need to try. Coconut so, grouper. So um, I will be trying to coconut get to grouper. that. But um, but go try the coconut grouper. I, you try yeah, the there you go. Because we're getting a lot of Facebook comments that are talking about about Illinois barbecue. They're saying it blows Kansas City out of the water, these Illinois State fans. I, I don't know about that. I live in Illinois right now. I can't well, say I've tried it. What you have to understand is, okay, in the olden days, cattle and swine industry used to come up through Oklahoma, right, through the stockyards of Fort Worth, through Oklahoma, into Kansas City, where they'd be thrown on trains, and they would go to Chicago, and then go yep. to the rest of the country. Yep. And of course, what's left behind, they would make into barbecue. Mm. Man, this I don't know about normal Illinois. I don't know what the go-to style of barbecue. If you have time, smoking meats can never go wrong. Man, I am salivating over here with this conversation. Mm -hmm. Me too. I mean, I already ate lunch. <laughs> we have not. I mean, it's art work, you know, working on a brisket. Got to report back. Working on a brisket for eight, nine hours. That's art. That's American art right there. So you wouldn't steam it and put a lid on it? <laughs> and try to get it done in two hours? <laughs> Now, leads now five as Illinois State's got a little stagnant offensively. Tried a couple nice threes, pass. and then Fain gets it. Oh. Can't hold on to it. Yarbrough gets it back. Back to Fain. That one he can secure. And the lack of a second interior post player who can match up with Yarbrough continues yeah. to plague the Broncos. Now, remember, R.J. Williams. Roderick Williams, he's sitting out because of a shoulder injury. And he's the perfect matchup if boys was at full strength. Woo. As Justinian Jessup says, I'm the perfect matchup. Wow, that was a big time shot right there. He's leading the, Bron the, the Broncos right now with 13 points. 
This is Copeland, misses. Fain has the rebound for a second, then can't secure it. Bodies all over the floor. There's RJ. Price High School product. He's not moving that left shoulder at all. Nope. The thing is just... No, I mean, listen, I, he's legit hurt. Yeah, I think so. He's legit hurt. And the Broncos have some very difficult games upcoming. There's Yarborough, one-on-one. -on -one. That's not really his game. One-on-one -on -one pull-up jump shot in the lane. Steve Olson, the official. Usually running to him a few times This a is year. a good crew. Steve Olson, you yeah. see Pat Adams, that's the African-American yeah. official. Yeah. One of the things Steve Olson does a lot of, and he used to work with Steve Wilmer, longtime official. And my buddy Matt Potter, my neighbor. Here's Pat. But but one of these, and all these officials do it, and I've played when these guys ref, is they talk to you. So they tell you what they're going to call for, so you can't say you weren't warned. Mm. Nice left. Oh, he got a misses he got the that toilet bowl swirl right there. Man. No matter how many steps a guy takes, nobody ever thinks they travel. No. Nobody. And this video of Carmelo Anthony on the wing catching the ball on the at midcourt and taking seven steps, literally, to the basket, and it wasn't called. So when you watch that and you watch these games, like man, you can travel. Did I drag my pivot foot? Too yeah. Much? See, I I always feel like. Uh, traveling is a lot like when you're speaking English. You know okay. when you screwed it up, it just feels wrong. Okay. Right? When you're like with tenses. Right, we, right, right. When you're conjugating verbs and so forth. Right. When yeah. you say like we was, like wow, that just yeah. feels wrong. That's the same thing when you're playing. Uh-huh. Let's go over to Chris. And, um, uh, and, and, and part of that is, that part of that's a great thing. He's an incredibly humble kid, hardworking kid who earned his way to being a first round pick. On the other hand, yeah, there is a certain, wow, I really have made it, and I looked up to these guys, and I didn't expect to be here. So there's a little bit of both that goes with it for Chandler Hutchinson. Malik Yarborough, double team, to the weak side, and another three from Keyshawn Evans. That's his third on the afternoon. Those are timely buckets indeed. Illinois State is getting it done right now. You know, obviously, Boise's a little short-handed, but I have to admit, I thought Boise would handle this game. So far, they've had their hands full. Well, Dickinson, that's why he's not known as a shooter. Stepped into one in the first half, and probably the worst thing that could have happened. Yeah. Now he hunts, his, <laughs> hunts he a three-point. He's a shooter. Yeah. Well, but you see how he kind of measures and kind of holds the ball. Mm -hmm. Oh! And I... I think he may have stepped out of bounds. Yeah, Keyshawn Evans stepped Keyshawn out of bounds. Keyshawn looked like he came from the bench. He was way out of bounds. It's the underrated part of that Ray Allen three against the Spurs was that he stayed in bounds. Years and years in practice. But I'll tell you, you know, we talked about traveling and how it just feels wrong. Yeah. Sometimes stepping out of bounds, you just feel, you spatially, you feel like. Yeah, you know. Yeah. We've all done it, though, in that corner. Especially when some guys kind of step back before they step forward and that back foot or sometimes they're just spotting up too deep in the corner to get a shot. And anything you can do, I can do better as Pat Dembley travels to match up with Keyshawn Evans stepping out of bounds. And you got people out here talking about Wendy's for for barbecue. <laughs> Come on, man. Wendy's an underrated burger. I will say that. And the frosty is fantastic. Oh, now they're talking burgers. They're talking in and out. That uh, conversation evolved somewhat. I have a burger every day. I'm a, I'm a Five Guys guy myself. You, you know, guys got Five Guys in we, California? We do. We do. Uh, my wife announced to me that she didn't get the in and out thing and that she likes Five Guys better. Yeah, I'm with your wife. Divorce yeah. proceedings have, <laughs> have ensued. Oh, are you uh, in and out? Die? In and out, do or die? No, I mean I like them both. I mean, I, but I do prefer In and Out. I actually, she doesn't like, she doesn't like In and Out's fries. She's like they, they, they almost taste paper. I was like, that's because they're real potatoes. They're made perfect. <laughs> Can I give people one suggestion if they're going on the road today to travel to see family? What's that? I guess I'm allowed to, right? Yeah, go ahead. All right, if you're traveling the road, whether it's Five Guys or McDonald's or Wendy's or In and Out or whatever, uh, Chick Fil A, just say, hey, I will wait ten extra minutes if my French fries are hot. 
nothing will make your trip better than or, or worse than if you buy some fries and they're cold. Chick-fil-A, you wouldn't have to tell them that because they refuse to sell you bad. Chick-fil-A, I, I actually got some bad. Great. They, customer really? service is bad. I got some bad ones. They remade them for me the other day. Wow. Chick-fil-A, you know, I'm from Atlanta, Chick-fil-A in Atlanta. That's where it started in Fayetteville, oh, well, it's Georgia. Chick they put a Chick-fil-A in the new Falcon Stadium, even though the Falcons play on Sunday and Chick-fil-A's not open. And they're right. not even open. More Chick-fil-A <laughs> conversation. We'll get more to this game. This is actually a very close game. Seven-point lead, Illinois State. Keyshawn Evans sucking a little wind, but he's going to stay in the game. There you go. I can deal with that. There's a, there's a burger. Burgers. Ooh, what is that? I'm not sure. That looks like it's got some mayo on it. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the mayo or the burger. Right now, I'm so hungry, I would eat the paper well, probably, as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's going to get bit today if we don't get Doug Gottlieb some food. Well, that, that's what happened is they said the, the food's not coming. <laughs> they got plain burger is a sad burger. <laughs> that's what I wife. said. It's, it's almost like when my, my God bless my wife, right? She, we go to a steak place, and she'll say, I want it well done. I want it well done. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't ever say that. Is she from Oklahoma? Smash burgers, yes. Smash Ooh. burgers. It's, I believe it's a southern thing to like things well done. That's the land of uh, the cattle, though. It is. She, they have their own cattle. Wow. She had to have a bite of Blackie, her favorite cow, when she was a kid. Oh, changed her that's a sad story, it's Doug. It's story. Oh. Her best friend is a child. And she ended up having it for dinner. Oh, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, that's terrible. Uh, as, <laughs> As Pat Dembley secures the rebound. Oh. Enough about burgers, says Carla. Sure, let's get back to this yeah. highly entertaining basketball game. <laughs> Meatheads Rock started in Normal, Illinois. I uh, Shake Shack. There's a there's a great chain. Yeah. Shake Shack is stay, uh, I mean Steak and Shake. Excuse me, Steak, steak and Shake's yeah. outside. Yeah. <laughs> that story. <laughs> That's going to stick with me. Uh, anyway, I, I'll just I'll, I'll conclude my end of the burger conversation. Yeah. I believe that you can't have you shouldn't have a cheeseburger without a tomato. Really good, thick, crisp. But the tomato has to be just right. I can live without it. I like lettuce. I lettuce I could take or I could leave. I do. I would. If somebody says the problem is I don't like the shredded lettuce, that just doesn't usually taste right. But a regular piece of nice fresh lettuce, although apparently you can't use romaine anymore. Nope. Not, Not right now. Yourself, no romaine. I, nope. Iceberg lettuce. Yeah. Spread the and, word. Um, I, I think if the burger's cooked right, you don't need any ketchup, but ketchup, yes, please. And here's something underrated. Fat Burger, California chain, puts relish on a burger with ketchup. That's I fantastic. That. As Malik it's, Yarborough it's, it's and one for fun. Is he going to get continuation? Before He's the shot. Before the shot. Yeah, he took a bucket from him. Took food off his table right there. I thought that was a continuation. I did too. He and Fane, the two... Big guns right now, both in double bacon thickness. and peanut butter. There's peanut butter on the cheeseburger is actually very good. You ever had it? I, I don't. You're knocking butter. it before you try it. Well, I'm one of the few people in this world that doesn't like peanut butter. So. You don't have to like peanut butter. Peanut butter on things. You don't like a like a I don't peanut like, butter and jelly sandwich. Nope. I don't like candy that has peanut butter in it. It doesn't really matter. Malik Yarbrough, take two points away from him. Yeah, He'll get it he back. Anyway. back. He got it. Don't take this one from me. Now it's a 59-50 ball game. The Boise right now is Malone Yarbrough with 19. They're in danger here, teetering on possibly letting this thing get out of hand. They have not really solved this zone, have they? No. And Alston not, not really comfortable there in the high post. As he turns and misses. Man. Last time he caught it, he kind of went away from contact. And they have not solved this guy, Malik Yarbrough. Yarbrough nice sneaks dive. the pass in there. Oh. Man, nice, uh, Dobu. nice dive. And Ray Adobu, great catch yeah, from Ray Adobu. Great catch, yep. Yeah. 2-3 now. They've mixed up the zone. It's been a 1-3-1, one, it's one, been a 2-3. Uh, I thought it was really telling from Dan Muller at the half as Tinsley deflects the ball. Dan Muller at the half told Kristen Balboni, we, need, we can't guard them. That's why they've gone zone. You know what? We can't guard your man-to-man. -man. Yep. Let's play him in zone. And Boise State has not been able, as you said, no. you like to run man offense versus zone. Their yeah. zone offense, not good Let's standing. go over to Kristen Belbo. And we're looking past that and going to 2020, and we're, we're very excited about the future of the Cayman Islands Classic. It's been a blast here so far, Joe. Thank you so much. All right, we just hope you come back next year. Absolutely. You're going to have to drag me out of here tomorrow, that's for sure. Tomorrow I get some beach time. The tournament's going to be, everybody's going to be gone, but I'll still be on the beach for a couple <laughs> days before I have to go home. Joe, thank you so much.
Uh, that, that, was, that, that was a little bit of a humble brag, Kristen. I just want to point that one out as Zach Haney <laughs> gets the layup to cut it back to single digits. And if you wonder, as Malik Yarbrough drives nice. in, and one, he's fouled Man. by Marcus Dickinson. If you wonder why Joe's a little dodgy, it's because it is really, really competitive to get these schools in all of these tournaments. You used to only be able to go once every four years. They have changed that rule. And, of course, uh, once you get a, a team from a conference, barring any conference relocation, you can't get a, a team from another conference. So you, you stop recruiting that conference. But teams will shift. And, you know, if a team gets invited to something they feel is more prestigious, sometimes they'll pull out or a coach gets fired. Sometimes they'll pull out. That, so that happens more than not. It, it, it does. For the most part, the fields are set and usually announced a year beforehand. This Cayman Islands Classic coming on strong, as is Malik Yarbrough. Remember there used to be like four or five, you know, Maui. I never got to great do Alaska I, I never got to do Great Alaska. I wanted to do that. That one is now defunct. I've, done, I've been in called Puerto Rico. Uh, this one, Emerald Isles. Uh, is Marcus Dickinson nice. with the curl layup. Cut that lead back to 10. They weren't playing I've, I've, done, I've done uh, uh, Cancun. I've done Hawaii, but not Maui. I've done um, Oahu. As when you say done, you mean as an announcer? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Josh, it's Josh Jefferson with the layup. The sharpshooter drives all the way in. Boise State seems to have figured out some things offensively as Zach Haney steps into one and misses. But defensively, they can't seem to stop Illinois State. They can't seem to stop Yarbrough in particular. 22 points now, 9 for 14 shooting. And Phil Fain got to be outdone. He's got 10. And then Jefferson got into the act, 3 for 6 from downtown. But Yarbrough is the guy who's getting it going for them. They're playing through him for sure. 640 to left. This, well, this, is, is, a, this is pivotal, right? This is a banged up Boise State squad as Dembley gets screened hard and Yarbrough misses that first one. Gets his shot blocked by Jessup, but they're going to get the ball back. Remember, Boise State playing without R.J. Williams, their leading scorer. Also, we've seen Alex Hobbs for just a minute or two. He's also hobbled a little bit. So you're without two of your top six. Yeah, Hobbs was the six man, Mountain West six man of the year last year. So certainly a, a, a key factor for the Broncos. Step back. Not a great shot from Jefferson as they've been getting so many good shots playing inside out basketball. And Austin steps into one. Quick transition three with nobody to help your board when you're down 10. Yarbrough looks, finds a double. Looked like he had it blocked by Zach Haney. Jessup back the other way. Misses, but there's Alston. sure that he listened to Malik Jefferson saying pump fake that pump fake right <laughs> as he pump faked it would be a 14 point game Jeff Austin right there with a, a little cleanup on aisle 21 if you haven't sampled it yet you should check out stadiums Monday through Friday programming lineup we start the day at 10 Eastern with our morning show called The Territory, where we take it through the biggest stories in sports across the country. Sauce and Sham moves up three hours and will air at noon, followed by a new high school show called Emerge at 2 p.m. Campus Insider moves back a half hour to 2.30. We wrap up the day by setting you up for the night sports with the rally. Game time in America at 6. Stadium, a new way to watch sports. Welcome to the game. You can also see some Mountain West games this year on stadium. The Boise State games I know are on the schedule. You see them, you see Facebook next to the next to your team's schedule. You know that game is going to be on Facebook, Care Stadium Sports. So how would this game go if RJ Williams was there? You know, not just his offense, but he would offer a little bit more resistance with Yarbrough, don't you think? Yes, I, you know, Boise was a uh, Two-point favorite, then a four-point favorite right before the game. I don't think the folks in Vegas knew that R.J. Williams wasn't playing. Yeah. As Keyshawn Evans misses that three-point attempt. So they would have been favored, I think a prohibitive favorite to, to win this game. They match up a lot better. Yeah. 
just look, the strength of Illinois State is those big three across the board. And Boise State, as skilled as they are, right? he's older, he's talented, and he changes that matchup dramatically. He's strong enough to, to kind of absorb the contact because Malik Yarbrough likes to get into you and then jump away from you. you know, and he wouldn't be able to create that same space he's been creating. I mean, he has been, <clears throat> quite frankly, bullying these guys in the paint. Here's that little ball screen and relocation off the zone. Nick Dickinson, we mentioned his struggles from three. Did make one of the first half, stepped into that one confidently and knocks down a two. It's now eight. As Jefferson got backdoor cut, and he's going to be fouled by Dickinson. Rice was screaming it. Back door, back door. You hear a set them. call play. I mean, one of the yeah. things when you watch a team play, you scout them in person for two days, you do yeah. know the calls. Yep. And he saw it coming. I mean, he heard it, but it's one thing to hear it. Well, that's hard when Josh Jefferson, who's a very good three-point shooter, and, you know, when the ball comes to your side, naturally you want to play up the line and not allow him to catch the basketball. Naturally, you want to get up that line. And really, it's Haney's job or Alston's job to be there to help you. Yep, so they're using your aggressiveness against you. Correct. She knocks down the first, misses the second. Definitely yeah, yeah, down nine. Yep, under 10 point lead, under five minutes to go. This is where Boise has to try to make something happen here, back to the zone. Remember, Illinois State would have gone in up six or eight before the break, if not for a couple missed layups and a Dembley three. Dembley, junior college All-American. Drops it off to Haney. And that's Wacker. And I, I, I did not think that was a fact. No, we, you know, we talk about verticality. You have to be allowed to offer some resistance when the offensive player is jumping into you. I would guess, though, that if we looked at it again, yes. no, his body was jumping forward. And, and it's something the they defender's really, body, yeah. Yes, Ten his body was jumping forward. So he made, looked like he was straight up and down. This Wacker, yeah. and, and they don't very good-looking free throw shooter. But they don't hold you to, you know, exactly Correct. vertical. They Correct. give you a little leeway. A, a yes, they give you leeway up top, but down low, they have really started to cut back on your ability to use that lower body. You can actually retreat, but you can't move forward. You can go vertical yeah. or back. I, I, look, I generally agree with you. I just... I... I I thought that was pretty good defense. Yeah, me too. Ooh, oh, that was a dangerous pass there. Now you got to make, see, when they press you like that, and you get that man attack, you want to smack them. But I understand they're trying to clock it a little bit, but it might be too early. And it's just a seven-point game. Fain has been so good on those post touches. So has Yarborough. Here's the two of them working together. Attacking Wacker, who struggles laterally. And Yarbrough releases it right before shot clock expires, and he finds oh. a way to get it. And Yarbrough has brought his big boy pants here this afternoon. Well, he's just so active. And part of it is he hit a couple jumpers in the first half to feel good about himself. Yep. But man, that was a loose ball, and the quickness which he picked it up with. Watch Yarbrough. Remember, Malik Yarbrough, shot clock's running down. He comes off the ball screen. He's Great looking at the clock. He gets yep. rid of it. And now look at all these hands. He just catches it and somehow secures it, quickly lays it up and in. He wanted it more, and Haney, was, uh, or, or Wacker, was just with his back to everything. He couldn't really turn around and engage. All right, well, let's, let's go over to our Facebook comments and try and figure out our favorite burger, all right? Favorite burger place in and out at Twitch. Five guys has taken down yeah. Shake Shack, making a run. You can get a Shake Shack if you go to City Field, as well as uh, uh, it's kind of a nationwide chain now. Whataburger, which Pat Mahomes wants to bring to Kansas City. Personally, a lot of like Have you breakfast, tried all of those? Yes. All four? I've tried to. And they have a spicy ketchup at Whataburger. Shake Shack. And that's here, right, Shake Shack? No, Shake Shack's East Coast, but it's, it's become okay. national. Okay. But they have, they have one in Kansas yeah, wait, City. Okay. I'm hearing they that. have one in Kansas City. Well, there is that. no Shake Shack in the Cayman Islands, though. <laughs> um, not picture there were votes for Wendy's. You're not going to turn down McDonald's French fries. Don't act like you, you know. Yeah, Burger don't King. throw your nose up at the McDonald's French Burger, Burger King. Uh, Carl's I Jr. I've fallen off of Burger King completely. 
Like, I refuse to go to It's funny, we had a sponsorship deal lined up for Burger King right until you made that comment. And now all of a sudden, we're completely out of, out of cash. All right, we're a nine-point game. <laughs> nine-point game. You get a chance if you're Illinois State to go home two and one. Yeah. Two and one. Feeling really good about Feeling yourself. Feeling good about yourself. Yeah. Nobody knows it's for fifth place nope. or for second place or so whatever. Man, you were one game away from winning that whole thing. And you go home with a win against a Mountain West club. Yep. School that's won 20 games six consecutive years. Yeah, Coach Rice, excellent job. And that's the guy that understands how to run a program, right? Because, you know, you don't maintain that year in and year out. It's hard to do. Uh, Del Smith said the uh, game was over when they withheld R.J. Williams from playing. That's a fact. Game was game has been competitive in oh, spite of the fact. They're acting like it's an arbitrary decision now. The guy is injured. A great inbounds play as Wacker scores. A double cross screen for Boise State. 337 to go in the game. You don't see a lot of cross screens being set anymore. Well, screening that middle man is kind of an art against the zone. A lot of times people screen the corner men, the wing men. Yep. And they forget that the middle guy, because the wings will extend to the corners. You can screen him. Jessup struggles to cover Yarborough. Chastain tries to get the tip dunk. Tried to clean it up. Seven point game. This game far from over. Facebook haters. There's Alston steps into one. Not so much. Chastain active off the bench with the rebound. Yeah, this is a seven point game with three minutes to go. Do you know how many possessions are left in this one? Do you know how many things can happen in a three minute game? We'll find out. Well, at minimum, you should have five possessions left. As Jessup gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar, even though Wacker looked like he took a charge. Yeah, Wacker was a great defensive position. But Jessup, with the reach, forced the personal. And now free throw what? shooting is going to be huge. And the official's like, hey, you can't be young. He's like, look, Wacker, I'm talking to my teammate. Don't reach. I got it. I got this. Yeah. Yarbrough at the line. Big, big miss. Missed both of his free throws today. Both front ends of one and one. Yeah. It's four points, right? He left on the table. How much time says Mike too blurry? Mike, wash off your screen as Pat Dembley steps into <laughs> one. And it See? is a four-point game. Yeah. Plenty of time. Now, Boise has blown a lead earlier this year. They'd like to get get that one back, so to speak. Yeah, Excellent yeah. opportunity. Idaho State game lost. Yep. Had an 18-point lead. Lost 74-72 at home. That's 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 an ouchie. As that mother's seen enough, and with 12 seconds on the shot clock, choose to use a timeout. He has one timeout remaining. Boise State has two. Still got a lot of good basketball being played here as well. Bro takes it to Jefferson, misses the three. Now Boise down four with wow. the ball, two minutes to go. Pat Striking Dembley, distance. They're, they're junior great college shape. all American, yep. state champion. Oh. Loses the ball as he's picked by Copeland. Copeland misses it, and that one is close. Yeah, we, are sure under two we are under two minutes, yeah. so they could go to the monitor, and that's exactly I, yeah. what Dan Mullers says he wants to do. Exactly. The, 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 the coaches have the right to request the officials to go look at that, and that's a good decision if you're Dan Muller. And Dan Muller's still coaching up his club. You need to be careful here on drawing up both an offensive and defensive play as Boise has done a great job after timeouts, inbounds plays of scoring quickly in a four-point game to get a little cheapy. All right, you make the call, Mr. Yarbrough. No, 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 uh, no foul there, obviously. No, I know, but, but who'd the ball go off? Oh, I don't know, Yarbrough, maybe. Steve Olson didn't hesitate, the official. Well, that looked like a bump by Jessup, not called. Not a foul on the shot. Can't see from that replay, but it does look like, and remember, it has to be indisputable yep. evidence. Indisputable Evans, and I didn't. I, I couldn't honestly tell who it was off, and I'm guessing Steve Olson thought the same thing. From the other angle, I thought it did go off a yard for him, So, well now, if, look, if you're Illinois State, you know Dembley, 13, a very good shooter. Alston, not as much. Struggled. 
Wacker's going to set a screen and roll. Huge body. Jessup, number three. On the weak Jessup, side. an outstanding shooter. You better stay attached. Dickinson, not as much of a shooter. See, if you're Copeland, you want to stay attached to perfect defense from Yarborough as Wacker tips oh. the ball. Nope, we're going, we're staying here. And I think. I have to look at that one, too. I huh? think they're going to look at that one. They'll look <laughs> at that one as well. As <laughs> Matt Potter's trying that, to that get ball, the ball thrown in. That ball was off Wacker, was it not? Yeah, I thought so. Now here's one. They're going to go and take a look yeah, at you got as well. As Dembley drives in, Jumps very in. good defense from Yarborough. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Wacker. Yeah. Wacker whacked it out. Yep. As he's looking up to his name. Phil Fain wasn't even trying to touch that ball. I mean, he had his hands retreating. Well, so whether he was trying to touch it or not touch yeah. it, he could have deflected it. I, I don't think he did. Yeah. Right? yeah, he's pulling his hands away is my point. We, we have an agreement from the entire crew here. Wacker gets, that should have been a foul on Wacker. Yeah. And then Wacker's left hand hits yeah. the ball. Yep. That's. So we're going out of the way with this one. And this is big, too, because Illinois State is nursing this four-point lead. Obviously, every possession is key. Now Illinois State has a chance to put a little bit more distance between them and Boise, but also get a, a you know, uh, take out some time on the clock. Just a minute and 34 left. Uh, the other issue there, yep. which is will smartly make the decision, overturn it. Man, you don't see a pennant, uh, a pennant <laughs> flag yeah. like that yeah. very often. Yeah, no, you don't. Maybe she got that from that Illinois State Santa. Last time against the press. Questionable cross court press. Remember Malik Yarbrough, 0 of 2 from the free throw line. Has struck from the free throw line in the They're going to foul him. Good foul, right? I think so, yeah. Guy yeah. just missed one and missed it short. He's missed both his free throws. Hasn't shot him well so far this year. I think that's a very good foul. Yarborough came into the game shooting just 59% from free throw line. Last three possessions, Dembley, a turnover. And he made one and missed one field goal. It's been in his hands, though. He was key at the end of the first half as well, scoring those five points to cut it to one before they went to the locker room. So now you're going to go down five, down six, doesn't matter. Yep. You need to get a quick bucket. So you're going for two right now, right now, Doug? I'm running a set and let the defense determine. And most everything they've run is that roll replace action. Don't be afraid to take a layup off it. They run Dembley off a little staggered screen into a three. Pass Just like Dembley. they threw it up. Great screen set, too. You don't see a lot of pin down action anymore. That was, that was brilliant. Now the foul, the giveaway. 107 to play. We talked about loot being attached, staying attached. That's that's the exact opposite of what Illinois State did. Yeah. Dembley hands the ball off, comes off a staggered double screen. And, and he got Josh, up all well, over Josh that. Jefferson, you can't try and cheat the screen. You yeah. gotta stick right behind yeah. him. Yep, yeah, you just chase him through it, right? Yeah. And if he curls, he curls. If he curls you... three uh, twos don't beat you. Nope. Three, uh, when Let you're when curl. you're leading, the guy wants to curl and shoot a mid-range shot, fine. It's kind of like defensive backs when just keep it in front of you. Now we, got, they, now we got a three-point game. Man. All Dembley all the Dembley. time. Keep That's an eye on position. Jessup. Number three in the white jersey, if you're just joining us. Boise State playing without R.J. Williams. Their leading scorer, junior college transfer. Here's Jessup. A few returners from last year's squad. Not sure why they're running that Dickinson. He's not going to shoot that. Dembley will. <laughs> Dembley drives in. Absorbs contact. Oh! Misses. Wacker gets it back and misses on, the Wacker. layup. Wow, that was huge. That was huge, Doug. Wacker point blank range. Smoked it. Right. He knows it. And the red shirt senior. Said when it was you know, dribbling, it was two, and two minutes and change to go. How many possessions? There's the five possessions. Made two threes. 
had a bad turnover, and they had several opportunities on the last one to cut it to one point. Man, that, that one right there, though, you got to stick that back in. Didn't really have any resistance either. They were trying not to follow, and they were going to let them have it. You know, interesting, they went away from Haney, who started to go with Wacker. Wacker struggles to finish and corral a couple of rebounds. Of course, this isn't all on him, but you would have loved to have him convert that. And Yarborough allowing him to keep him around. Yep, so interesting. Again, if you're Illinois State, one, there's that same staggered play. They're going to switch out on it. Ones, twos don't beat you, threes do. And you can't foul on a three-point shot. As they fouled on a three-point shot. They sure did. <laughs> That's a lot of contact on I mean, that. And as Dembley steps into one, and it looks like Illinois State might survive, but running at Dickinson, who's not a good three-point shooter. You wouldn't know it by the way they're the urgency with which they're chasing him. And just a little bit a little bit of panic from Illinois State. It is hard to rebound out yes. of that zone. And it's hard to sometimes be chasing ghosts. But a four-point game, seven and a half seconds to go. All right, coming up next, Georgia, Georgia State. Yes, Georgia sir. under first year head coach Tom Crean taking on Georgia State. And you said to start this tournament, and I kind of agreed with you to start the tournament that you expected Demarcus Simons, the junior for Georgia State, to be the best player in the tournament. Why? Well, he was some belt player of the year as a sophomore. He put his name in the draft, decided to come back, and he's got a, 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 a many ways that he can score. Didn't play really well yesterday, and his team as a result didn't. He's got a lot on him, though. They depend on him to carry the load, but he's capable of doing it. But, I mean, I just think he's a dynamic individual player. Good size. Illinois State one stop away is a foul. He stopped the clock. Copeland. As Keyshawn Evans grabs him and says, dude, all you got to do is not foul. The clock right. is our friend. The clock is our friend. Now, 5.1 seconds to go. Crazy if you make happen. the first. Do you miss the second intentionally, or do you? I miss the second like, intentionally. I do that. I actually won a game when I was coaching high school one year. Did that. Made the first one, missed the second one, tipped it out for a three, banked it down, four-point play, and then one, one possession. I know it's a low percentage, but it happened for us. So it could happen. Well, you got to make that first, make the first one first. Yeah. A lot of times so you, you just miss the second. So you run a tip-out play. They got length in there, too. You know, I mean, Austin could get over Malik Yarbrough and get a hand I on would, it and tip it I, out to the I shooter. would not. It's such a low percentage play. I would try and get a steal and a three instead. Let's see what they do. He makes it. This is what they're going to do. Going to call a timeout. So let's first see who called the timeout because Illinois State calls the timeout to set up their inbounds play. And you can run the baseline, but now you do not have the ability to call a timeout. And if you're going to turn it over, turn it over on the other side of half court. You talked about your team actually practiced that kind of stuff, right? With loose balls. Well, with loose balls. Yeah. And yes, but, you you do want to you don't yeah. you, you don't want to give a team an inbounds play. Now, if you also if you throw it length of the court and nobody touches it, the ball goes back to where right. it was underneath. There's an inbound underneath, and now you're up but against you can, it. You can run the baseline. Yeah. And so you there should be no excuse for not getting the ball inbounds here. And if you're Boise State, you want to try, you should face guard everything with a man that's, now do you put a man on the ball, or do you put a man in center field? Um, I would like to probably put a man, not on the ball, but in that half court, and maybe double one of the guys to try to get that hard trap first. He's got 5.1 seconds. Still, I could, you can get a hard trap in 5.1. Hard trap and foul. Okay. I, I would, personally, I would put face guard everybody. Face guard means get all the way in front. Dare them to throw the ball on. And then put your so you would best put a guy. So you I would, would not put a guy, put a guy in the ball. Oh, you put him in, as a safety. Correct. And face guard the other four. Okay. Now, if I saw that alignment, <clears throat> I would have somebody step out of bounds, throw it across the inbounds, and throw it back to the guy who steps in bounds and took it in bounds. As an offensive player, I love when they put a guy on the ball because we got to go throw that touchdown pass for a dunk. Yeah, but if you have a you have an guards. Alston with that type of length like you do, it's really hard to see. Yep. There's the post up. That's why you got to you have to get in front. If you're Malik Harwell, you just have to. As much as that was a great job of posting up by Yarbrough. Now, 
This ain't over, is it? It's not over because he struggled from the free throw line, a 55% free throw shooter. If he makes one of two. This, this is a hard pass here. Look yeah, at it is. the but length that that's length, on you. Yeah, that's tough. You just throw it out to where only your offensive player can get it. Kind of Tinsley with a good inbound. Pass. Yeah, exactly. He didn't pan it. Marlboro makes the first. Okay. So if you're Illinois State, you're pretty much guaranteed at least overtime. Well, 4.1. If, if you miss, you foul right away. If you make, if you make, doesn't matter. Yep. So you try to make it. Go ahead and make it. End it. Oh, he missed it. No timeout. Or do they have one? He traveled. <laughs> that was the now they have no timeout. And that was big. Bad at him. And, and Austin says, Smarty time. says, put more time. Yeah, they were. I thought Illinois State, for a second there, figured out, oh, yeah, we got a foul here as Tinsley went over to try and foul at the end. So this is where you wish that they would adopt the NBA rule, right, where you could take I don't. it out half court. Really? No. You, so the NBA that, is the NBA. College basketball is college basketball. Oh, it's okay man, to be different. But don't you like when they have – it gives them a better chance because they can advance the ball? Well, we did – the Bryce Drew play didn't take a lot of time. That was length of the court. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, with the uh, – Christian Leitner got one like that too. Correct. Villano Villanova – Grant Hill. Length, length of the court. As you look at the bracket. Leitner was, received one like that in, in one year. Okay, and so one year he, he, he threw one. I, I don't understand why somebody gets half of the court for free. I don't like that rule. I don't even like that rule for the NBA. But that's <laughs> the NBA's rule. They can have it. It's also – It's not a, free. It costs you a timeout. It, it's also – it's also a difficult angle. Difficult angle. Sometimes take that ball in for a college player. Still rather we'll, be close. we'll see if I'm, I'm sure you'd rather be close. <laughs> um, we'll see if Alston takes the ball in bounds because he can see over the length of Illinois State. Not a ton of sideline depth. Take a look at this bracket. We'll see Georgia, Georgia State next, then Creighton, Clemson. Stay tuned here in Stadium Sports to yeah. see that championship. Oh, it's about it to get be better. The, 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 this the, game has been good. Yeah, it's been very good. And we haven't even had R.J. Williams. Yep, and it's going to get even better when we get Georgia, Georgia State, in-state competition there and then the championship game now you are not going to foul you've run out of the opportunity 1.9 seconds to go you don't have time to foul because whoever catches it going to rise They're and shoot, shoot. Yep. if you're Boise State I wouldn't be surprised me if you run some sort of you can throw it to the weak side wing a lot of times because guys are on the ball side ball you man you set flare screens a lot of times that's open so throw it over the top and there's of Austin the taking the ball in bounds because of his length that is a tough angle for a pass yep. he's Oh, not good. Jessup for three and the tie. Oh, that was online just about oh, just three, short. two or three feet Natural short. shot, too. You would, I would like them to try to throw it a little further, like you said, to get a better, higher percentage shot. A furious comeback, but it falls short for Boise State. With one look, one, one dribble. He got it all lined up. Jessup did. 1.9 seconds. That would have counted. Pretty good defense. Just a little bit short. He didn't, Jessup didn't even run off any screens or anything. He just kind of appeared and got a 40-foot shot. I mean, they're going to give that to you, I guess. I, I guess. That's Malik Yarbrough outside of some free throw shooting errors at the end of the game. Can't take away from his spectacular performance. And Justinian Jessup recovering from injury has 13, seven rebounds, five assists. And the Broncos go home to get healthy after unfortunately falling to one and two in the Caymans. Right, let's go down to Kristen Balboni, who's with the victorious Dan Muller. Coach, it was a battle the entire second half, came down to the last possession, and your team got the win. What can you say about that performance in the second half? Well, your third game in three days, both teams are really gutting it out. I thought Boise did play a great game. Leon does such a good job with that team. We had a lot of lapses, but we found a way to win. Speaking of that, three games in three days, you come away winning two of them. What did you learn about your team in this experience? You know, I think we got better. We haven't guarded very well, but we've played harder on this trip. We need to take this back to the States with us and really, you know, continue the effort level. Um, it's a good group of guys. They're a lot of fun. We're talented. We just got to play hard all the time. And one more before we let you go. Your fans were over there doing chants, Redbirds chants, five seconds left in the timeout. What does it mean to have them here with you? I'll tell you what, that's an unbelievable crowd. And that shows the passion for Illinois State basketball. We thank all of them who came. Um, we got a great place. I'm blessed to be the coach there. We want to make them proud. That's important to me. Make those guys proud, our fans. Hopefully we did. All right, Coach, thank you so much for the time. Guys, back to you.